Okay, let's talk about the best way to solve these type of problems. Now, you're looking at this, you're like, well, what type of problem is this? Well, obviously, we're dealing with algebra because there's an x here, and there's an equation. So it's like, okay, it's an equation. We got algebra. And so if you just said, let's solve these algebra equations, which is all different types of equations in algebra. So really, the key to describe what type of equation this is is to... A look at this little number here okay this is not a quadratic equation okay or this is not a linear equation this is not some other type of equation what this is is an equation that is involving rational exponents okay so the exponent is a rational number meaning a fraction so how do I deal with these type of equations well you need to know how to deal with these and oftentimes a lot of students will be like oh man I, I need a, my calculator I need my computer I need all these different tools and oftentimes you will need a calculator to solve equations that involve rational exponents but basically what you need more than anything is knowledge and that's the whole uh, purpose of this video is to teach you one how we approach these and two that oftentimes the best way to solve uh, equations that, are, that involve rational exponents you don't need a calculator matter of fact you know, the, you know, a problem like this could be given to you yeah, on a quiz or a test where your teacher says no calculators allowed. So we're going to cover how to solve this particular problem, and it'd be a good overview uh, to this topic of solving equations with rational exponents. And we're going to get to this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that statement. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. Uh, so I have all the main courses like pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, uh, college algebra. I'm going to be launching my pre-calculus course here. But I have uh, several, uh, many, many uh, test preparation math courses. So for those of you who are studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, GRE, GMAT, Alex, AccuPlacer, um, there's a ton of different reasons. Our teacher certification, nursing entrance exam. Um, there's a lot of huge, uh, very, very important critical exams that people take. They have to pass, and there's a huge uh, math component to them. So I recognize that. I've developed over the years very comprehensive math test preparation courses. So if you're studying for a particular exam, check out my full catalog. I likely have your course. And if I don't, uh, drop me a line in our contact form, and I'll get back to you. I also work a lot with independent learners. So if you're like a homeschooler, for example, I have a great homeschool learning system. And then obviously, if you're just struggling in your current math course, let's say you're taking Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and you need additional help, I can help you out. Now, one thing you could do to help yourself out is to take fantastic math notes. That is absolutely just the foundation of learning math. And uh, kind of over decades of teaching math, it's just that my golden rule is those students who take great math notes almost always get great math grades and the reverse is true those students are just like nah i don't like to take notes you know i'd rather do my homework or look at my cell phone or talk to my best friend listen i get it i'm not trying to make you feel bad uh, but let's be honest right there's a huge amount of distraction that's going on when you're learning in class okay and the one way to avoid all those distractions is what to be engaged so you can stay focused on an activity that will keep you focused, all right? And that is note-taking. If the teacher is constantly teaching, you have to be you know, concentrating to put this in to your notes. And your notes should be fantastic, all right? You should be able to read them. You don't want to just be like scribble scratching like this, like I used to be back in the good old days. Um, so I know I used to be slop, very sloppy. And matter of fact, I would take all these notes and I'd be like, oh, look at me. And then I'd look and be like, what did I write down? I don't even understand my own notes. So if that's you, listen, a lot of people are like that. That's why note taking is a discipline. It's a skill. And you really got to stay focused. Now, um, as you're improving in your note taking, and hopefully, you know, this will motivate you to, to do so, you uh, still need something to study from. So I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. Okay, so let's get into how to solve this particular uh, equation involving rational exponents. And I'll show you how to do this without the aid of a calculator. Of course, you could use a calculator here, but we're going, we're going to go ahead and just show you the best approach uh, how to do it. Now, the first thing you need to do when you're solving an equation involving uh, rational exponents is to solve for 
the rational x the rational exponent and the variable component this part of the problem you want to get this by itself and you can see we have this by itself so how do i do that well you can kind of see this is two times this equals to eight so if i had two x is equal to eight how would i solve for x well yeah i would just simply divide both sides of the equation by two i get x is equal to four so same thing here i'm going to divide both sides of the equation by two and i get x to two thirds is equal to four so this is where you want to really have the problem set up. Now, anytime you're dealing with um, equations that involve powers and exponents, and you have a number on one side of the equation, and it's nice and simple this way, think in terms of how can I express this number on this one side of the equation as a power in and of itself? So here I have the number four. And you're like, oh, okay, well, four, isn't that equal to two times two? Uh, in fact, it is. So let's express four in terms of a power. So when you're dealing with powers and exponents, uh, try to get, oftentimes, especially if you're not allowed to use a calculator uh, on this quiz or test, that's almost a dead giveaway. You're gonna have to take this number and express this as a power. So four is the same thing as two squared. So now I have my problem kind of all uh, set up to solve. So I have x to the two third power is equal to two uh, squared. Now, one thing that you need to know, okay, about these expressions, let's just do a quick review here. X to the two thirds, okay, this is the same thing as this, all right, this expression, X squared, uh, th this is the cube root of the expression, uh, the cube root of the square root of X squared, right? Or the cube root of x squared, excuse me, that's the way you say that. Now, I don't want to go, let me write that a little bit better, okay? That's what this is equal to. So you're going to have to be able to, to uh, uh, rewrite radicals into rational exponents, and that's kind of a, a different topic, but you need to be aware of that. So some of you can be like, well, isn't this equal to this? In fact, it is, okay? But what we're going to do is uh, um, solve this equation um, sticking with rational exponents. We're not going to rewrite this in terms of radicals, but you just need to know that those are, uh, are equivalent. Okay, so I want to solve for x, but I have x to the two-thirds, all right? I want to solve for x, so I want x by itself, right? x like this, x. I don't want x to the two-thirds, but x to the, uh, you know, when I'm solving for x, this is really x to the first power, okay? We, just, you know, we write it as x, but it's really x to the first so I'm saying, well, how can I make an x to the two-thirds into a one? Well, that's pretty easy, okay? I could take this two-thirds and uh, raise that to the three-halves power because when I distribute three-halves to two-thirds, okay, two-thirds times three-halves, and if you're not familiar with um, how to take a power to a power, uh, check out some of my other videos in my algebra playlist, but this is going to be, obviously, all this cross cancels, this is going to be one. Okay, so I have x to two thirds. If I raise that to a three halves power, I'm going to get x to the first power or x. So that's what I want. But of course, if I raise this side of the equation by three halves, I have to raise this side of the equation by three halves as well. And so now I have to figure out what this is. Okay, uh, let me do this x squared, x squared to three halves power. So this is going to be 3 halves times 2, so 2, or 2 over 1 times 3 halves. You can see the 2's cross cancel, and that's going to be equal to 3. So 2 squared, okay, all this to the 3 halves power. I'm taking this 3 halves and multiplying by 2 is going to be 2 to the 3rd power, or 8, okay? And so now I'm like, oh, okay, so x is equal to 2 thirds power. And what is, a two, uh, what is 2 to the third power? Well, that's going to be 2 times 2 times 2, which, of course, is 8. And that is my solution. Okay, that is the solution. Now, if we go down here, if we looked at this in this way, if I'm saying, uh, if I had the problem here, uh, remember I had x to the 2 thirds is equal to 4. If I wrote it, the cube root of... Uh, x squared is equal to 4, you can see that mm, it would be a little bit more difficult to kind of interpret what's going on. That's why we like to work in uh, rational uh, 
uh, ration, are rational exponents, okay? Uh, not uh, Rational expressions are not the same thing as rational exponents. That word rational, though, in mathematics means uh, like fractional, okay? So this is the best approach. And oftentimes, again, you're going to have to solve these equations without the aid of a calculator. But when you do use a calculator, you're, you're still going through the same mechanics. You just won't be able to, you know, uh, oftentimes, you know, this is not going to work out nicely like this. And I've done me uh, many other videos on um, solving equations and, you know, calculator mistakes. It's a big topic, okay? Uh, again, algebra, it builds upon itself. You have to be paying attention because these skills that you're learning in algebra and mathematics are all interconnected, all interrelated. And they're just not like, you know, you learn one thing and then it moves on to the next thing and then you move on to the next thing. The thing that you learn here, you can, you may have to learn over here or apply in this particular skill set. It's really cumulative, okay? It's not, you can't uh, like have any shortcuts, you know, when you're learning math. You can't be like, I'll learn, uh, you know, I'll learn here and then I'll learn over here and then I'll learn this and this and then I'll choose to lose, learn this thing over here. That's why it's um, critical that if you are struggling in math, you get uh, help immediately, all right? Go to your teacher. That's the first thing you need to do. So if you, or let's say you, you um, failed a particular test, okay? That's a huge thing. If you failed a t your a test, don't be like, okay, I did great in these two or three different tests, you know, prior to that, but then I failed this test, so mm, I'll just wait to the next chapters to come. Do not do that because that's not going to work out well for you. You need this skill going forward. It may not show up in this next chapter, but it will show up in your future. So you, you have to resolve any misunderstandings. And that's why, you know, the best way to avoid failing, okay, is taking notes. That and obviously, you know, uh, learning from a teacher that you like and understand. And hopefully, you know, I could be one of your uh, teachers. You know, obviously, if you are in a class, you got to learn from the, your actual teacher. But if you need additional help, you know, and you like my teaching style, then I have a ton of videos, not only on my YouTube channel, obviously my math help program that help that can help you out. But if this video here helped you out, please consider smashing that like button. That certainly helps me. And if you're not a subscriber, uh, please consider subscribing. Again, you'll get my newest uh, videos, but already I have hundreds and hundreds of videos organized and uh, basic to advanced math on my playlist. But if you want my best math help, just go to my math help program and go to the course that you're studying and you can check it out and kind of make your decisions from there. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.